On the 16th of August, 1819, the huge open area around what is now St Peter's Square, Manchester, witnessed an outrage against over 60,000 peaceful pro-democracy and anti-poverty protesters, an event which became known as the Peterloo Massacre. An estimated 18 people, including three women and a child, died from sabre cuts and trampling. Over 700 men, women and children received serious injuries, having come in peace in the name of liberty and freedom from poverty. The massacre occurred during a period of immense political tension and mass protests. Fewer than 2% of the population had the vote and hunger was rife as the disastrous Corn Laws made bread unaffordable. My name's Susie Heslin and I'm a um, Literature Festival organiser and I'm the Literature Development Officer for Rochdale Central Library. I've actually been working with the cooperative members group and all the most of the creating, creative writing groups in um, Rochdale to uh, develop this wonderful memorial to those who were killed and injured in the Peterloo Massacre, which is Percy Bysshe Shelley's um, Mask of Anarchy poem that he penned in response to the Peterloo Massacre. On the morning of the 16th of August, the crowd began to gather, conducting themselves, according to contemporary accounts, with dignity and discipline, the majority dressed in their Sunday best. As 600 hussars, several hundred infantrymen, an artillery unit with two six-pounder guns, 400 men of the Cheshire Cavalry and 400 special constables waited in reserve, the local yeomanry were given the task of arresting the speakers. The yeomanry, led by Captain Hugh Burley and Major Thomas Trafford, were essentially a paramilitary force drawn from the ranks of the local mill and shop owners. Heading towards the hustings, they charged when the crowd linked arms to try and stop the arrests and proceeded to strike down banners and people with their swords. Rumours from the period have persistently indicated that the yeomanry were drunk. The panic was interpreted as the crowd attacking the yeomanry and the hussars, led by Lieutenant Colonel Guy Lestrange, were ordered in. And by 2 p.m., the carnage was done. Yeah, hi, I'm Norman Warwick. Um, I facilitate a writing group in Rochdale, and the writing group are actually playing the part of readers of uh, the Shelley poem, which is the main thrust of the afternoon. Uh, my role, I suppose, has been uh, recruiting the readers, um, familiarising them a little bit with the, with the poem and the text, working with other facilitators throughout the borough to bring this to fruition. The Mask of Anarchy was according to its subtitle, written by Percy Bysshe Shelley on the occasion of the Peterloo Massacre. The text identifies the perceived central scandal in British society during the Industrial Revolution, the exploitation of the mass of workers by the new capitalists. It says that exploitation will continue unless the masses do something about it. The central theme and message of this magnificent poem is non-violent protest. It is known that Gandhi would often quote Shelley's Mask of Anarchy to vast audiences during the campaign for a free India. So listen, if you will, to a poem perhaps as relevant today as when first written 200 years ago. To read the Mask of Anarchy, we have members of local creative writing groups Weaving Words, Langley Writers, Downhill Writers and Touchstones Creative Writing Group, along with members of Rochdale Cooperative Members Group. As I lay asleep in Italy, there came a voice from over the sea, and with great power it forth led me to walk in the visions of poesy. I'm Paul Jellon. I uh, took on the role of director uh, the poem was written in anger 
uh, and is very radical in its underlying themes, the themes of which were, were worried greatly the um, government of the time, or the local government at the time anyway, in Manchester, because they thought that the French Revolution was about to start. So they clamped, they clamped down, sent in the soldiers, etc. Um, the poem is written in verse form in order to not make it quite clear how radical it really is under, in an underlying way. He did the same thing with his poem Ozymandias, which is essentially a, a sort of anarchist poem. O'er fields and towns from sea to sea, past the pageant swift and free, tearing up and tramping down, till they came to London town. And each dweller, panic-stricken, felt his heart with terror stricken hearing the tempestuous cry of the triumph of anarchy. For the pomp to meet him came, clothed in arms, like blood and flame. The hired murderers who did sing, Thou art God, and law, and king. We have waited, weak and lone, for thy coming, mighty one. Our purse are empty, our swords are cold. Give us glory and blood and gold. Lawyers and priests, a motley crowd, to the earth their pale brows bowed like a bad prayer, not over loud, whispering, Thou art law and God. Then all cried with one accord, Thou art king and God and Lord. Anarchy, to thee we bow, be thy name made holy now. And anarchy, the skeleton, bowed and grinned to everyone, as well as if it education had cost ten millions to the nation. For he knew the palaces of our kings were rightly his. My interest in this particular uh, project has come from the fact that I um, manage for Rochdale Borough Libraries a collection of English and philosophy books um, which are held at Rochdale Central Library which is called the Maskew Collection. Mr and Mrs Maskew, who it's named after, met in the Rochdale Central Library which is now Touchstones in the 1950s and uh, they left um, money as part of a bequest to Rochdale Central Library for the people of Rochdale to be involved in reading and thinking for all the future generations. Um, I'm Vicky Lomax and I'm the Arts Festival director for the Rochdale Literature and Ideas Festival. Um, this is the Mask of Anarchy event and I'm working alongside Susa Heslin to develop and help support the event. Heroes of unwritten story, nurslings of one mighty mother, hopes of her and one another, rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. Yeah, my name is Eileen Earnshaw. I'm the secretary of the local co-op members group. I was asked by uh, Miss Heslin, the uh, literary development officer, if I would be a member of the board. Uh, we decided that uh, the Mask of Anarchy by Percy Bysshe Shelley would be a suitable project and that's uh, where the idea came from. Ye can tell that which slavery is too well, for its very name has grown to an echo of your own. Tis to work and have such pay as just keeps life from day to day in your limbs, in a cell for the tyrants used to dwell, so that ye for them are made loom and plough and sword and spade with or without your own will bent to their defence and nourishment well it's the first thing i've ever directed the minimum we could do was provide a director and a producer so i volunteered for director or uh, uh, set myself up as director or suggested i be director and my colleague norman the producer there was no other way 
I've been a writer all my life. I went to a secondary modern school where to, to say that you wanted to be a poet or a writer was like putting your hand up and saying, take me outside and beat me up now because I've nothing better to do. Um, but we had one really inspirational teacher, a guy called Mr Drury, who would look at the poems I was writing for fun and would uh, not critique them but just encourage and say, you know, carry on, develop, hone your craft. And that was just the kind of advice and passion that you need when you're 14 and 15, you know. It is to be a slave in soul and to hold no strong control over your own wills. But be all that others make of ye, and at length, when ye complain, with a murmur weak and vain, tis to see the tyrant's crew ride over your wives and you. Blood is on the grass, like dew. Then it is to feel revenge, fiercely thirsting to exchange blood for blood and wrong for wrong. Do not thus when ye are strong. Birds find rest in narrow nest when weary of their winged quest. Beasts find fare in woody lair when storm and snow are in the air. Asses, swine, have litter spread and with fitting food are fed. All things have a home but one. Thou, O oh Englishman, hast none. This is slavery. Savage men or wild beasts within a den would endure not as ye do, but such ills they never knew. What art thou, freedom? O oh, could slaves answer from their living graves this demand tyrants would flee, like a dream's dim imaginary. Well, I'm, I've always written poetry, I've, I've always written prose, I, I've done it all my life. It helps, it helps us to create a community um, where people feel that they belong, where they feel they've got something to add to the community and where they're, they're appreciated, where their opinions are, taking, are taken note of. Everybody has a talent of one thing or another and in these large group areas um, we are able to bring all these different talents together so that we hope that we then form a cognitive whole which you know helps people tremendously I find it helps people. I'm Graham Marsden I'm a community artist and I'm involved because I was asked by Eileen uh, if I could do some shadow effects to uh, support the work. I've done a lot of shadow puppetry um, and the initial idea I think of Eileen's was to give some atmosphere visually. We didn't want to go down a route of trying to do a literal interpretation. The, the poetry makes its own visual imagery for everybody, it's very very strong but it was felt that by perhaps creating some shadow effects. Initially, we thought about on the fabric of the church itself, on the furniture, but ruled that out because it would technically be far too complicated, difficult, expensive. Um, I've got a shadow puppet screen which we're using, and what I'm doing is rather than hard, defined puppets, I'm creating effects by using a gauze, and the idea is that it provides a focus for the audience to look at without distracting from the words. So in a way, visually, it's giving some ad additional atmosphere and a focal point for the words. Was if English toil and blood was poured forth, even as a flood it availed, all liberty to dim, but not extinguished thee. Thou art love, the rich have kissed thy feet, and like him following Christ, give their substance to the free, and through the rough world follow thee, or turn their wealth to arms, and make war for thy beloved sake, on wealth and war and fraud, whence they drew the power which is their prey. Kind of came involved in the Rochdale Literature and Ideas Festival. Um, my background is that I'm, I'm a visual artist and puppeteer and I work with lots of community groups across Rochdale, across Greater Manchester and various arts organisations 
over the past 10, 15 years. Um, I worked as arts co youth arts coordinator for 10 years, working with Rochdale Youth Service, working with youth groups from across the borough really, um, bringing them together in events and festivals and developing their ideas. Um, from there, I've also worked with, with lo lots of different writing groups and setting up writing projects with Cartwheel Arts. Let them ride among you there, slash and stab and maim and hew. What they like, that let them do. Um, we've done two performances so far, um, readings that we've given at the two libraries, one at Middleton and one at Haywood. Uh, there was a good sized audience at each, but much more impressive to me was the way um, we could measure the improvement in people's reading since we'd started rehearsing this, and we could measure how much better their readings were because of their understanding of the poem. So it's quite nice to be able to explain to writers that they read better when they fully understand the text, therefore it's quite important that as writers they help their readers to understand their texts. Eloquent, oracular, a volcano heard afar, and these words shall then become like oppression's thundered doom, ringing through each heart and brain, heard again, again, again. Rise like a mind start to slumber, in unvanquishable number, shake your chains to earth like you which in sleep hath fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. In Manchester in the year 1819, cotton folk of Lancashire in protest did combine. Corn laws had brought their crippling tax, price of food, dear broke folks back. And set a light to smouldering flax and bristled many a spine. Salute once more these men of yore who were to conscience true. I'm Bob Ashworth, folk singer. I'm Martin Gittins, retired teacher. And we got involved, we were approached indirectly actually. Um, mutual friend of ours who we do a, a musical production about Peter Lou with was approached to come along and sing a particular song here and he wasn't available so he passed his, the people on to me and we're here to do one particular song called, just called the Song of Peter Lou. When I was in my prime, 1960, You're never in we had prime. a rock and roll band and then you leave school, people get married so armed only with a battered old guitar and three chords I hit the folk scene and I've never looked forward since. Yeah. I, I got involved because uh, probably because my brother was in the same class as Mike Harding at school and started going to Mike's clubs from him when he was in his mid to late teens in Crumsall and uh, Blakely and probably the first club I went to was the White Lion in Blakely that Mike ran on a Sunday night and teamed up with Bob 20 odd years ago. Must be, yeah. yeah. John Ashton, Manchester, Sabred. William Bradshaw, Whitefield, Shot. Thomas Buckley, Chatterton, Sabred and Bayoneted. Robert 